another thing is this chuck that I found. Uh, it's a three inch chuck. It's a four jaw. I looked at it more closely and actually it says Dunlap and it's got a part number on it uh, 770 something 03 or whatever. But I, I just looked it up. This is a four jaw chuck for apparently a Craftsman 109 lathe, uh, which I have one of those that I'm going to be fixing up to sell and it's got a three jaw on it now so I'll be able to add this four jaw to that lathe package and increase the value of that. All right next pile we have here is uh, this is just an empty box but it's for a uh, brown and sharp slant line micrometer that was probably in one of the toolbox drawers and got snagged by somebody earlier on. But I don't know I have some slant line brown and sharps I think they have their boxes though, so yeah. This is a uh, this is by the King Instrument Company of Huntington Beach, California. Two inch PVC. Uh, oh, this is a yeah, this is a flow meter. Uh, flow gauge. Brand new. This is a made in China boring bar set. Actually, look like they're in decent shape, though. They were eight dollars and twenty cents new. What year? Well, it looks like I did get something else. This is uh, labeled roughing, fine flute, single end, one inch shank. Oh yeah, okay, that's a big roughing end mill. This must be the only other high speed steel that I got in this one lonely key seat cutter that I found. It's a brown and sharp. There were a lot of books and paperwork there. A lot of it had already been gone through, but I managed to snag these up, these items here. This is a Fowler uh, Fowler catalog. This is a Dual Tooling and Supplies catalog. I'm glad to get this because I've come across some Dual stuff in the past and just had trouble figuring out, you know, whether or not it was like complete or stuff like that. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing a lot of. Oh, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna get into some of the dual machinist tooling. Boring heads and mill holders. Fixtures. Vices. Magnetic chucks, sign plates. Hmm. No real metrology stuff though. 50 yards of one inch wide. Can't tell what grid it is. Here's another diamond wheel. This one appears to be used. It's still mounted on another one of these adapters. And then I piled in all these slitting saws I found in a draw. Very small ones. Here's that box I found partially buried underneath the uh, bench that the lathe was on, but the lathe already had a quick change tool post on it. I left it alone because I figured it should go with the lathe. But since this was an extra one that was laying there, I snagged this. So this is a uh, cheaper import style. It's got the, uh, this, this shape. Instead of the wedge, it's the piston lock, but it's a little bit better than the round piston because they give you a little more surface area. Okay, got a little bit of surface rust on it, but it's clearly brand new. It's weird, this chuck was in here drill chuck on an arbor. There's the handle. It's just, I don't know if this was some kind of a kit and it's missing pieces. There's the key for this chuck. And then there's two sets of knurling wheels. So, I don't know if there was anything written on the outside of this box that might clue us in as to what the deal was with this or what. Oh, box is unmarked, not gonna worry about it. This is uh, 
drill bits that I found. They are new old stock, high speed steel, it's a bag of all the same size. Made in the USA by ATM, Alvitson Tools and Machines. Designers and makers of twist drills, reamers. Huh, well, that's gonna be pretty old. Half inch. It's funny, it says quantity of six and that's how many are in here. So it looks like this was actually a full bag. Yeah, these are brand new. Nice. Speaking of drill bits, well, actually, let's get this out of the way. This is a roll of uh, 4043, 30,000 th thickness MIG wire, uh, Lincoln Electric branded MIG wire. So, might be able to use that for something. Two drill indexes. This one was in the uh, cabinet uh, that I mentioned earlier. And it's got some substituted ones up the top here and some of the smaller ones missing but it does look like it's got still a decent array in here and i don't think this one had any markings on it yeah this one this one appears to be maybe a no-name maybe an import I'll just randomly grab one of these drills and see what we can see yeah that says china so this is probably a cheaper set. But check this out. Now this they had a price on. This was sitting there on a table with some other items they had priced. 50 bucks they had on this. It sat there for the good part of the morning. And so when I was getting ready to leave, I added this to my lot of stuff. So um, I don't know what he ended up discounting this to because like I said, he gave me a package price on everything. So. I'm not into this for the 50 bucks, and even if I was, I wouldn't be too concerned because here's the thing that I thought was really cool about this that I think a lot of people missed. Notice it says Triumph American Made Guaranteed Quality Folding Metal Container Tool Set. Well, what's, what's actually in the box here, it does say Triumph Twist Drill Company, highest quality high speed drills, right? Look what the case is. Huat, or however the heck you say it. And it's mint. This is brand new. Not one of these drills appears to have ever been out of this set and used. This is a brand new old stock drill bit set from the Triumph Twist Drill Company. And apparently they sold their drills with Huat holders. So how much, you know, how much are you gonna pay for something like that these days, right? Yeah, and these are all marked USA. That's a hell of a deal I got on that. The fact that that sat there with a bunch of tool hoarding, tool buying guys walking around it all morning, including me. <laughs> all right. But in the end, I walked away with it, so that was a, that was a nice one. Oh, looks like I uh, I did buy one other indicator. I don't know how, but I ended up finding this Starrett, and I think, yeah, it's locked up. So it's got issues. That's probably the only reason why it was still sitting there. But I think I might be able to do something with this. And it's a nice large dial Starrett indicator. So I put that in my pile. Um, here's another Morse tapered R8 adapter. Okay, here's a... Uh, Here's a few more of those collets that I scored. Um, in the, all right, so these are the hex collets. I knew I had gotten some hex collets. They're just 5C, they're not marked with names, so they don't appear to be hardened or anything. Um, I think, yeah, some of these are just like brand new. So it's almost like a, maybe a full set of hex sized 5C generic collets. Not gonna bother checking them all. Oh, this one's got something on it. Oh, they do have a name on them. Hold on a second. It's on the side. Plainfield, New Jersey. Rail mics. Oh, our old friends, rail mics. So this came out of the rail mic tool catalog. Neato. Okay, great. A couple of random parallels. One good pair and one single. And this mystery block. 
precision grind on it. Nicely made. We've got a bore with a set screw, maybe to hold a diamond for dressing a wheel. Not sure. So make of it what you will. One of the few metrology items that I was able to find, one of the few precision tools that did not get spotted. This was actually on a shelf up above the lathe. And that shelf had been gone through by the looks of it. A lot of things picked off of it. There was a bunch of junk still up there. I dug around through the junk and dug down a little bit and found this. This nice, this is a Starrett number 123 hardened and stabilized master bar vernier caliper. Um, Goes up to 26 inches here, so probably usable to about 24. I don't think I have one this size. If I do, it's probably in Meditorial. But it's very clean. Unfortunately, wasn't able to find a case for it anywhere. May have been ordered without the case. So, might have just had a cardboard box originally and that may have gone, you know, gone missing. It was calibrated at some point. It was calibrated in 2003. So that clearly wouldn't have been there if somebody had just dug down a little deeper before I got in there. All right, I got like three or four more items and we'll be done with this pick. Don't ask me why I grabbed this thing. Luckily, I didn't pay a lot for this whole lot because this, this has got very little value more than likely. Um, but I just thought it was kind of a neat thing. I would love to have had all the parts to it, but... Um, <laughs> So it, this was actually up on top of the foundation in that little area like between the joists up in the back So I don't think it was spotted right away and nobody had ventured that far into that corner to reach up there and get it I'm pretty tall and got long arms, so it worked out fine for me, but so this is a micro drill 164-7 uh, Made by the Cameron Precision Engineering Company of Sandra, California, so I believe this is a a sensitive drill press um, and you know the big problem with it is that on the back here where this hole is there was supposed to be a post that comes out with a bracket supporting the motor the motor would have had a three-step pulley on it because there's a three-step pulley on this side and uh, you know without that you get to fabricate something this motor which is a Bodine Electric Company of Chicago, USA, antique motor, universal motor, was sitting on the foundation next to it. So he had this stored together. I don't think that this is the original motor. I think maybe he just had this and maybe the plan was he was going to fabricate the missing bracket and everything. I don't know. We may never know. So this is probably going to be a parts machine. Hopefully somebody out there needs some of the parts off of this thing and is going to be looking to restore one and would be willing to pay me a little something. It's kind of neat. It's got a depth stop built into it. It would make a nice little project, but I just, I don't have the time and I've got too many projects to do to deal with as it is. Oh my, <laughs> just for the heck of it, eBay, a 164D-7, I don't know how different the D is uh sold on ebay for 761 dollars a 164b-7 all original sold for 525 dollars and a 164d-7 sold for with an albert keyless truck on it sold for 525 dollars so <laughs> now i'm really wishing this was a complete drill press so I looked more clearly with magnification and I can see there's an A stamped in there after the 164. So this is a 164A-7. So I'm, I'm guessing that this is the smallest size in the series. But the higher the letter, the bigger the, the, the drill press is. There's like nothing coming up on eBay for used parts for these uh, being listed either in past sold auctions or whatever. Um, and all the complete drill presses have sold for over $500 with the exception of one. But interestingly enough, that one, I believe that was because the people who were selling it, they saw on the original motor that it says 67 series, which is the type of motor. And so they had listed it as a uh, 
Cameron 67 drill press and uh, as is untested for and it sold for 75 bucks I would have loved to have gotten a hold of that because I could have taken that machine and made one complete machine out of it and relisted it as the correct part number. I could clearly see the label uh, in the first picture, but I couldn't zoom in enough to see what the model number was of that one that they had there, but oh well. So I guess this is gonna have to just head to eBay and uh, I'll, uh, I'll hope somebody comes along that's looking for parts for a Cameron Model A. Uh, micro drill. All right, guys, I only got a couple more items from this estate, and then uh, I'm going to tack on a few things I just picked up at the used tool store this week, and uh, then we'll close out this uh, this series. Uh, this is a uh, 12 volt regulated power supply. Uh, after I finally went up into the upper part of the house where there wasn't a lot of stuff, I did I did find this 12 volt power supply sitting around. Anyways, this is the uh, only. CB related item that I found kicking around so um, I threw it in my pile and it was included in that whole lot and uh, it's a pyramid phase 3 which is a, a, a kind of a cheap knockoff brand it's 13.8 volt it's saying it's 12 amp I kind of have my doubts about that um, when I turned it on the LED the LED power light doesn't come on but I've actually checked and it does have 12 volts. Um, don't know how good the regulation is on it. I've already actually already used this, uh, tested it. it, seems to work out fine. And the light does come on sporadically, so I think it might be just a bad connection at the LED. Nothing I'm gonna really worry about. Kind of a handy thing to have if you ever need to test something that runs off of uh, 12 volts. So this is the only item that I purchased at the estate sale that wasn't included in that $200 uh, pile. Uh, because I purchased this earlier on um, and I cut a deal on this for 40 bucks and this is a uh, Dayton brand uh, which is not not a really high-end brand not 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 a complete piece of junk um, it's a model number 2z 646a-1011r uh, this is a 1 by 42 inch sander so it uses 42 inch long 1 inch wide belts uh, it was sold under the Dayton name and also sold under the uh, Rockwell name, apparently, from what I could read online. The um, other interesting thing about this sander is that this extra idler on the arm right here is actually designed so that what you can do is you can take this tilting table off, you can take the belt, take the looped belt, so let's say this wasn't broken, right? Take the belt like this, stick it through an opening in some part that you want to sand the inside edges of, for instance, and uh, loop it around here, and then use this idler to push the two belts very closer to, much closer together, so that essentially you've got two belts going through the hole that you want to sand the inside of, and you can use the back side for sanding. You can take this off for doing just deburring. This tilts for sharpening. The two posts with the wing nuts on them that I was wondering if that was a guard that's missing. Sure enough, it's a guard that's missing. Uh, I don't know on the, some of the newer ones it was plastic. I don't know if it was an ever, ever a metal guard that went over here, but no big deal. It was several variations of these models. One variation of this model actually included a sanding disc on this side. The shaft is plenty long enough and there's a flat spot to mount a disc, but it doesn't look like there was ever a disc mounted. And I do not see any evidence of the mountings for a table for the disc on this side. So I don't think this model ever had a disc. I think this was strictly a uh, strictly one of the models that was strictly a belt sander. And then I guess uh, also this same exact setup was almost copied perfectly by uh, uh, another company and sold under the name Grizzly. You know, I got it for 40 bucks. I'll, I'll you probably use it here in the shop if it, if it works. It's got the original Dayton motor on it. When I saw this, it was up on a shelf in the corner. It looked like it had already been retired from use. I'm hoping it wasn't retired because it doesn't work well. I'm hoping it was just, you know, that he didn't really need it anymore. And there was a mouse nest kind of on it, and I cleaned that off. 
Uh, and then when I was looking around at all the other junk there, I added these to my pile. Uh, may very well be belts that I can use on this. This is just going to be kind of an extra. So I'm just going to check this out real quick. We'll see if she chooches. First things first, let's see if the motor's still good. Motor sounds okay. I'm not sure what that noise is that I'm hearing though. It's kind of unusual. Well, it looks like I won't be test running this anytime soon. Um, I unwrapped these belts that I grabbed. They're huge. My thinking on this is, even though I have my other belt grinder, which I really like, I could just have a different grit on here maybe. And uh, that way I don't have to switch back and forth between belts or whatever. Hey guys, I forgot about this little drill press. Uh, also from the same Rhode Island estate. Um, so what this is, is this is one of the earliest do more sensitive drill presses that I've ever seen. It's got a unusual looking silver colored motor. And I don't think that this was black originally. I think it came from the factory that color. So I've never seen one like this. Uh, it's got the very similar design as far as the um, table goes where as my other one, which you've got a coarse height adjustment here. And then once you lock that, you can then use this to raise the table. And then there is a, uh, there's actually a height adjustment here, a stop for the height adjustment, which is kind of neat. I don't know if I've got that on my other one. Hmm. I'll have to look. Cast iron base. So, uh, I haven't tried this yet. Uh, the wiring is downright sketchy as heck. The cord rubberized cord that's kind of dry and brittle but yeah, and cracked but most of the insulation is intact it's got the old uh, non-grounded plug deal on it so because of the sketchy wiring that i'm looking at here i don't think i want to touch any of the metal parts on it even if it does run it's got a foot switch which I do not know if this is original to this or not. I also don't know if it's a... Yeah, it feels like this might be a variable speed control. So, let's see. If, um, if the shop plunges into darkness, it's because this outlet that I'm plugging into happens to be on the same breaker as the lights. All right, so again, I don't want to touch that metal foot switch just in case there's a, in case the hot side of the line is shorted to the case in any way. That would make this AC hot relative to ground, which I don't want the power from this going through me to go to ground. Hey, it works. That actually startled me. To run it slow, let the bearings warm up a little bit. All right, been running it at a lower speed for a few minutes now. Let's open it up wide. Got some vibration in there. You don't normally get a lot of vibration with these dual moors. I just put this on the table here just to see if that jiggles around. Very little on the motor. See moving around a little bit there. I mean, it's not bad, don't get me wrong. But I mean, like my other do more, the more modern style, which even that's old, but not as old as this, that that thing, it's like rock solid at 30,000 RPM. Uh, actually, I'm wondering what the, the data plate is kind of worn on this. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to tell. All right, so the little data plate there actually says that this is a model PD, or it says type PD. Uh, and then there's a serial number, it gives the voltage uh, 115 volts. And then it's interesting. It says uh, cycles. It says DC 260, which tells me that 
they're probably saying this can either be run on DC voltage or any AC voltage up to 60 Hertz or 60 cycles per second. Uh, that kind of tells me this must be a pretty early one because I think it's been quite a long time since DC voltage was one of the options. And that goes back to the original when electrification of households had begun in the, the whole argument between uh, Edison and uh, Tesla or uh, Westinghouse about, uh, you know, should we be doing, using AC or DC? So, anywho, um, the RPM plate is blank. It's not filled in. But I did find a uh, somebody in a forum online said that they had acquired a model, uh, the same model on... Um, at a thrift shop and that their data plate said 17,000 RPM, which I think that sounds about right uh, for, you know, an earlier one of these. I think my newer one goes up to like 30,000 RPM or some sick number like that. Yeah, all right, so that's a nice little score. Um, I don't know, I might just sell it as is or maybe I'll take the time to rewire it and sell it. Uh, but uh, I'll probably just keep my more modern one.